Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Smith and today I want to talk to you about the thyroid pathway. The thyroid pathway is basically a roadmap of how your body makes thyroid hormone and it is a little bit more involved than the standard of care model that the medical doctors do. Uh, I'm going to explain to you why the standard of care approach is not sufficient enough to really figure out where the breakdowns are with the thyroid problems that people have. So everything kind of starts with the brain. If you take a look at the upper left hand corner, there's a picture of a brain there. And in the brain, we need two different neurotransmitters, two different chemicals in the brain to make this process work correctly. One is called dopamine, and the other one is called serotonin. And these are neuropeptides, they're neurotransmitters, and what they do is they act upon a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, when it receives enough dopamine and serotonin, it produces a hormone called TRH, or thyrotropin-releasing hormone, which you can see right about here. And the TRH, when it has enough of that going around, it then acts upon a secondary structure in the brain called the pituitary gland, or the master gland. The pituitary gland then secretes a second hormone. This one is called TSH, or thyroid-stimulating hormone, that you can see right about here. And TSH, what that does is it then goes into the circulation and it acts upon the thyroid gland, which is a butterfly-shaped endocrine gland that's in the lower part of your neck. And when this TSH goes down to the thyroid gland, what it does is it stimulates the thyroid to produce hormone. And there are three different types of hormones that the thyroid gland produces. One is called T3, one is called T4, and the next one is called calcitonin. Calcitonin is involved with calcium physiology, and we're not going to talk about that today. But the thyroid gland also it needs tyrosine, iodine, and thyroid peroxidase enzyme, these little chemicals right here. And when it has those chemicals in sufficient quantities, it can produce T3 and T4, the thyroid hormones. T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. It's the kind that your body can actually use. And about 7% of all the thyroid hormone that comes out of the gland is T3. T4 is inactive. It is biologically inert, meaning it doesn't do much. And it has to be converted into T3 in order to take on that active form that your body can use. 93% of the hormone that comes out of your gland is T4. So you may be thinking, well, wait a minute. If T3 is the active form that my body can use, but I'm only manufacturing 7% out of my thyroid gland, that's not really efficient. And you'd be exactly right in thinking that. So what happens is that your T4, which it represents the majority of the hormone that comes out of your thyroid gland, that has to be converted into T3. And that conversion takes place in two different structures in your body. One is called the liver, and the other is the gastrointestinal tract. So if we take a look over here, the T4 then goes down to your liver, where it is treated by, in one section of the liver, it's treated to an enzyme called 5' prime monodiodinase. And when the T4 is treated by 5' prime monodiodinase, it is converted into T3. What that enzyme does, 5' prime diodinase, is it cleaves off an iodine. T3 has three iodines, T4 has four iodines. That's how they get their name. So the T4 gets treated to this enzyme, it cuts off an iodine off the molecule, and it turns into T3. And you get, you get to recapture 60% of what's you started off over here, 60% becomes T3 right off the bat. Now another 20% of the hormone that goes into the liver gets treated to a second enzyme. This one's called 5-diodinase, and that becomes reverse T3. Think of that as kind of an overflow valve 
for the thyroid hormone. Reverse T3 is inactive. It's permanently inactive. It can never be recovered, and it just gets spilled over and reabsorbed by the body. And then the, the last 20% in the liver becomes T3 sulfate and T3 acetyl sulfate, and that chemical then goes over to the gastrointestinal tract for a secondary conversion where it's treated to things like bacteria and hydrogen peroxide. And inside the gastrointestinal tract, it then turns into T3 and you recover some over here. So in summary, of the T3, the active form of thyroid hormone that your body needs, 7% right here comes from the gland itself. 60% is gonna come from your liver and the remaining 20% is gonna come from your gastrointestinal tract during secondary conversion. So as you can imagine, in order to have normal thyroid function, you have to have a healthy brain, you have to have a healthy thyroid gland, you have to have a healthy liver, and you have to have a healthy gastrointestinal tract. Most medical doctors are not checking all of these areas. They're all, all they're doing is they're looking at the TSH, T4 loop. So that's probably a good time to describe this right here. If you have not, if you don't have enough T4 hormone in your body, it sends a signal back up to the brain and specifically to the pituitary gland to make more thyroid hormone. So what happens is the pituitary gland then secretes more TSH hormone. The TSH then goes back to the thyroid gland and makes it make more thyroid hormone, T4. Think about it this way. T4, imagine you're driving your car and you are running low on gas. And then a little light comes on your dashboard that says, you need to go get more gas because we're running out of fuel. So it sends a signal to the gas gauge on the dashboard that says, we're low on gas, you need to get some more. So you pull into your gas station and you fill up your tank with gas and once you've reached a certain level in your tank, that little sensor in the tank turns off and that turns off the, the, the light on your dashboard. Everything's okay now, right? Mission accomplished. T4 is like the gas in your gas tank and TSH is like the light on your dashboard. So when the T4 level comes up, it sends a signal up back up to the brain to tell the pituitary gland to turn that light off the dashboard, the TSH, that everything's okay now and you don't need any more. But if you have low T4 and high TSH, you have hypothyroidism. And the standard of care in medicine is to look at this loop between T4 and TSH, and that's the only part that they look at. They don't look at any el anything else in here, which is why if that's all they're doing, they're going to be missing a lot of the information that is necessary to accurately diagnose your problem and to come up with a solution. Does that make sense? So let's say that your T4 level is normal and your TSH level is normal, but you still have low thyroid symptoms. What then? Did your doctor do a T3 test? Because T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. And if your doctor is not measuring that, how do you know that your T3 levels are okay? Remember, 80% of your T3 is not coming from your gland, it's coming from the liver at 60% and then your gut at 20%. So it is critically important that your doctor is measuring T3 as well as T4. Otherwise, you're not getting all the information. There's another thing over here on the bottom right-hand corner. It looks like a little cab. And that's what I call the TBG taxi service. TBG stands for thyroid binding globulin. Thyroid binding globulin is a little carrier protein that transports thyroid hormone all around the body. Thyroid hormone is kind of lazy and it likes to catch a ride from a cab. It doesn't want to walk around. So 98% of all the thyroid hormone in your body is actually bound to thyroid binding globulin and 2% is not bound. The percent that is not bound is called free hormone. So if your doctor is ordering a free T3 or a free T4, what they're measuring is the small amount that is not bound to the thyroid binding globulin. That is why it is important that your doctor measures the total T4 and the free T4, the total T3 and the free T3. 
because otherwise you're not getting a clear understanding about how much of it is bound and how much of it is free. The way that we measure thyroid binding globulin is with another measurement called a T3 uptake test. The T3 uptake test is going to measure that. Okay, so as we were saying, the doctors order the T3 uptake test to measure thyroid binding globulin, which is a measurement of how much of this protein is present. So let's say that your thyroid binding globulin is very, very low. That means that you're not able to transport your thyroid hormone from place to place. And ultimately, you want to transport it over here to the cell where the thyroid hormone can do its job, which is to stimulate the basal metabolic rate of your cell and make everything work correctly. So if you're not able to transport your thyroid, you can have plenty of T4 in your, in your blood. You can have plenty of TSH. But if your thyroid binding globulin is low, you're not going to be able to get it from place to place, and you're going to have a hypothyroid type problem. This is one of the reasons why, as I said before, you have to do all of the nine thyroid tests. You can't just rely on a very small amount of testing and assume or extrapolate information from there. I hope that you had uh, a, you have a better understanding of the thyroid pathway after having gone through this video with me. If you have any questions about your pro uh, hypothyroid problems or you'd like to speak with me on the phone about your issues, visit our website at integratedmetabolic.com or you can give us a call at 412-212-8880. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks.